I'm John Batchelor. This is the John Batchelor Show. Bill Rajo and Tom Jocelyn of the Foundation for the Defense of Democracy's Long War Journal are with me. The name of the priest and two others, the name of the priest executed June 23, according to the, Mr. Rajo's report on Long War Journal, is Father Francois Murad, M-U-R-A-D. There is a video, and it's a video produced by the Al Nusra Front, but I want more. Bill, Al Nusra Front. Who are these guys? And you make a deal of the fact that the speaker on the video is not speaking fluent Arabic. He speaks with an accent. Who do we think they are? Yeah, it's it's impossible to tell based on the quality of the video. And, and just be clear, the Anusha Front didn't officially release this video. If you catch the, if, if you watch this video, just watch the first minute and fifteen minute and thirty seconds, and you'll see everything that we're describing here. You see, um, there's a plenty of people taking. The, the, pictures of this. There's children in the background and there's people taking video of this with cell phones. Everyone's try, trying to get their hand in to, to get the picture of the beheading. People are cheering, even children. It's, it's very disgusting. Um, uh, but the, when you, the, the speaker, uh, according to the person I spoke to who translated this, had, um, he's not speaking in a native, he's not speaking Arabic as his native tongue, clearly. And he described it as being broken Arabic. So it's possible, he said he could be a Chechen or from the Caucasus. He could be from Central Asia. He could be right. from Pakistan. Right. He could be from, uh, you know, from Afghanistan. He's wearing a, the the Pakul hat, the hat that you t- typically see uh, worn by Pashtuns in Afghanistan and Pakistan along that border area. And uh, they're be- all bearded. They're also wearing the you know the dress that you'll see people from that region, from that Afghan Pakistan region. That doesn't now. I've seen people seen jihadist dress like that with Al Qaeda in Iraq that were actually Iraqis. So it's difficult to say just on that, but when you combine with the broken English, you know, and there's another possibility here, and this gets back to what Tom had said about, you know, where does one group end and the other begin? Um, we've discussed the Mujahideen army in the past. The Chechen and, Brigade, the Chechen Brigade that yes, formed up several weeks Chechen, ago. Yes. There's also Syrians in there, right. and this group might, may as well be al-Qaeda in Syria as well. They operate hand in glove with the, with the Nusra Front. You can't tell where one ends and the other begins. Tom... The, the President of the United States, in a change of policy or perhaps a continuing of policy, but in any event, has um, committed the United States to supporting the Free Syrian Army or the resistance against the Assad regime. And most recently, I believe the reporting includes lethal weapons, uh, lethal uh, assistance, uh, not just aid. Uh, how do we know that that aid is not going to these murderers? Can we make that distinction? Do they make the distinction in Syria? Well, we, we can't know who the aid's going to ultimately. I mean, the problem is that much like money, uh, guns are fungible. That basically once they get into a geography like Syria or anywhere else, they easily can be handed from one group or one set of persons to another. And the bigger problem here looming as far as I'm concerned is that really one of the principal actors in arming the rebellion in Syria that has come to the fore is Qatar. And this is our sort of duplicitous quasi-ally in all this. But if you go back through some of the leaked State Department cables, as I have, and look at what the State Department was saying even during the Obama years about Qatar, is that it was a very lucrative fundraising uh, locale for the Taliban, al-Qaeda, Lashkar-e Taiba, and others, because it's seen as a very promiscuous environment for jihadists to basically fundraise and gain aid. Lo and behold, when you go to press reporting on what Qatar has been doing inside Syria, you find that they've been arming their own Islamists and jihadists, and basically they're trying to draw a line and say, well, we're not arming uh, and funding necessarily al-Qaeda proper. Well, the problem is, with these groups, as Bill and I keep underscoring here, you just don't know where one ends and the others begin. So how do we know that they're not, how do they know that they're not even funding al-Qaeda, even if we believe them and take their face value, which I don't? How do, you, how do you even know that that's true and that their aid is being confined to just sort of these other Islamist or jihadist groups which are like al-Qaeda but not full-blown al-Qaeda? And we just don't. Bill, there are two, at least two other priests you cite uh, because the Pope has asked for their release. Uh, One of them is a significant player in uh, Syria. Do we know their fate right now? To uh, the uh, bishop and his assistant. In the same region. The Mm -hmm. Neutral Front, by the way, is said to be in control of this region. Mm -hmm. Um, And their fate isn't known. There are two other people killed that are being beheaded in that video. However, it's not clear if that's them or just happen to be two other Christians that were in the town, which I think is more likely the case. It seems like the, the, this priest was executed. So 
sometime immediately after he was either captured. And there's reports that he was captured and shot and killed. But the, the Vatican statement where, it's un, where they said it's unclear and then this video emerges, which clearly appears to be him, uh, you know, it, it looks like that he was captured, kidnapped and captured and then uh, summarily executed, whereas the other priests have been captured and are being ransomed over time. And my understanding in the statements on the video, Bill, is that the reason these men are murdered is because they're Christians, correct? That's the cause. Yeah, so they claim, that what they claim is that not just that they're Christian, but that they were working with the Assad. Right, right, right. And what we're seeing increasingly in Syria, or, the, you know, and this is based on press reports, is that Christians and other minorities are increasingly starting to side with the Assad regime because they're being persecuted by the by the Nusra Front and other jihadist groups. The, you know, they're, this, this is becoming a sectarian war as much as it is as a war against the government. So not just the uh, the, the Assad family, Alawite, that, minor, that Shia sect minority, but other minority groups, Christians and Druzy and others, are, are starting to side with, with Assad because they view the opposition, including the Free Syrian Army, to be far worse. Tom, uh, 10 seconds. Did they just cross a line by doing this? Did they, did they do that on purpose? You know, I don't know. I think they're trying to drum up support uh, right, whoever did right. this for the most radical version of jihadism. So. Tom Jocelyn, Bill Rajo, good intelligence wins wars. I'm John Batchelor.